Hey there, true listeners. This is Kyle from the Longbox Cast, and you're listening to another great Four Eyed Radio podcast. For more great shows, check out fourideradio.com. And while you're at it, check out our Facebook page at facebook.com slash longboxcast. Greetings, true listeners. No, don't worry. Steve's here. I'm just doing the intro for the first time. So don't get too worried. I'm not going to make you guys listen to me talking for an hour long. We'll be talking about a death of a teenage mutant ninja turtle. We won't spoil it here, just so just keep listening. Got casting for Weasel in the Deadpool movie. Jim Parsons wants to play a certain character, if he ever could. And we now have directors for Avengers Infinity War. So keep listening. here. How's it going, Steve? It's going good. I'm stuffing my face with food. <laughs> I was trying to keep it all hush hush. I'm like, you know what? I'm like, you know what? I'm going to let Kyle shine this week. I'm just going to just totally just phone it in right now and just... <laughs> yeah, should be fun. All right, so before we uh, get everything ready, do the uh, intro stuff. I haven't done this yet, so let's see how well I do. Oh, you're fine. Just read from the script. Yeah, that's what I'm going to do. To listen to the show, you can find us on 4 Spreaker, iTunes, Stitcher, Zune, Marketplace, Blackberry Podcast Directory, Blueberry Podcast Directory, Mirror Guide, Double Twist, YouTube, Swell Radio, SoundCloud, and Player FM. The podcast is brought to you by Revenge Lover Designs, illustration designs that fit your personality. For samples and inquiries, visit revengelover.com. We're also brought to you by Fancy Escape, Comic Cards and Collectibles, you can check them out at fancyescape.com, or if you uh, want to check out their eBay site, check out eBay. Look up the eBay ID 50 Batman. That's five zero B A T M A N. We're also proud supporters of Comic Care Comics. Got any comic books you don't want or don't need, but you don't feel like selling? Donate them. They'll take them off your hands and give them to kids who could really use them right now. How was that? That was good, man. I'm starting to believe. Like we might, we might have to do like a vote sometime, or people will be like, "Do you want Kyle to do the intros, or do you want Steve to do the intros?" I think we should just keep it every other person. And, uh... No, I, I like that too. But sometimes I want, I want our fans to make us compete because technically we are like Captain America and Tony Stark. Like Kyle and I will work together, but we want to do it our own ways. Right, right. I'll go by the American standard ways, and you'll just sell out. Yeah, like I always done. Yeah. Well. Uh... Anyways, how have you been, Steve? I have been good. Uh, you? <clears throat> Doing pretty good. Um, went and saw Insurgent this past weekend. Uh, that's based off of a book, right? Yes, like everything else. Oh, okay. I wasn't <laughs> sure what's what anymore. Yeah, so um, the... I I kept yeah. seeing previews to that. I have no idea what it's about. So if you want to enlighten us, is it a, is it a did you read the book? I did not read the book. Okay, so you have nothing to be like, well, the book was better kind of thing. So just as going as a moviegoer, what did you think? I thought it was a really good movie. If you've seen the first one, Divergent, you'll like this. It takes place pretty much like five days after the first movie, so... Oh, wait, th this is the sequel? Yeah, this is a sequel. I didn't even know there was a first one. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Um, mm -hmm. I'm really far behind the time. Yeah. Well... It was a good movie. Really enjoyed it. Lots of action. Um, great acting all around. Can't argue with any of it. And I believe there's going to be the one more, but I think they're splitting into two parts or something like that. Don't fully remember. But otherwise, good movie. Go check it out. If you've seen the first one and you're still hesitant about the second one, just go see it. You'll enjoy it. Okay, well, yeah. It, now, is it a trilogy? I'm guessing, or I believe so. I haven't fully divulged into the whole thing, but eh, I I really don't got much to say about it. I mean, like I said, it's a good movie. I enjoyed myself. It was worth the price of an arm and a leg. Oh, okay. Uh, does that are you smiling? 
No, uh, I'm just saying, you know, movie um, tickets are outrageously kind of a, expensive. A separate thing where like somebody in the movie actually loses an arm and a leg. No, no, not yet. Um, now, would you say this is a good movie to probably watch right now until you wait for uh, Avengers <laughs> <laughs> to hold you over? Yeah, I would say just. Uh, I mean, unless of course you want to watch Fast and Furious Seven. Who does it, man? Oh. I know. Driving a plane out of a, or driving a car out of a plane, skydiving. I mean, come on. Dude, where did they come up with this shit? Obviously, Hollywood has gotten their stuff together because they're just coming out with... I'm like, you know what? Literally, first movie comes out, I'm like, oh, that was a pretty good movie. I did not see a sequel coming. Then they made a sequel. I'm like, okay, there's no way they're going to make a third one. Then they made a third one. I'm like, dude, how can you guys keep producing so many good storylines, one right after another? I mean, it's ridiculous, man. They're up to seven. Like, And you know what? It's not losing memento at all. I feel like there's some sarcasm in there. What are you talking about? <laughs> I love those movies, man. Uh, again, I'm having a hard time telling. Uh, you should be an actor. I've tried that. Or I need to try that. Yeah. Uh, I haven't really read anything. I picked up a few books, but I just haven't had time to read them yet. I picked up a uh, new issue of Spider-Man, uh, the new issue of Spider-Gwen, and uh, yeah, actually that's about it. And yes. more than me, like, I won't be picking up anything. I, I know people are probably done. They're like, when is April coming? So Steve can talk about, stop talking about his freaking move. Um, but, yeah, <laughs> as soon as that happens, uh, then I'll do that. Um, oh, uh, this is kind of interesting news. Uh, apparently, uh, which kind of disappoints me for June, but uh, I guess Batman Arkham Knights has been pushed back. I did hear about yeah. that. I also heard a possible rumor that they are remastering Arkham Asylum in Arkham City. Ooh, for the PlayStation. I'd be down for that. So they'll probably do that. Oh, well, no, I'm I will have a PlayStation Four by then. So if they just release it by then, or uh, they just release it for that system, which I don't think they're gonna do. Because actually, I just was on Xbox One just the other night looking at stuff, and it looks like they're gonna be releasing Borderlands on hmm. Xbox One and probably PlayStation Four, and then also Borderlands. So it's a good thing I kind of waited on certain stuff to buy. So I was like, all right. So nice. Have you seen the new show I Zombie that came out last week? No, any good? It's really good. Okay. Oh, you know what? I can watch it though because I do have Hulu, so I'll definitely check yes. that out. I didn't it's know what I was starting. So I uh, watched it this past weekend. It's actually based off of a comic book, and they. Uh, yes, yeah, so we can talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> Is that how we work? If it does something with comics, we can talk about it. Yes, it's based off a comic book. And they actually show homage to the comic book roots. Like, when it comes back from, like, commercial break or it goes to a commercial break, they'll do, like, the whole, like, pause the frame and then it looks like a comic book's just, like, drawn over it or something like that. So it looks like it's a comic book. So I kind of like that. Cool. Yeah. So C is CW, you think, coming, becoming the comic book network now? Cause... I think CW is. I mean, they had Fla they have Flash, they have Arrow, Arrow. iZombie, I mean, as of right now, that's it, but there's supposed to be, you know, that whole Adam spinoff. Yeah. I mean, Fox has got Gotham, and was it NBC that had Constantine? Yeah, I don't know what's going on with Constantine, because they're trying to, like, keep it alive, and everyone's like, oh, it's a good show, but I'm like, when? Yeah, I still haven't checked it out yet. I just watched the first episode and kind of gave up on the second episode, so, I mean, you yeah, probably still catch up on it on Hulu. Uh, like, uh, but other than that, eh, you know, yeah, it's kind of like... I, honestly, I'd rather just make another Constantine movie. <laughs> yeah. Well, I Zombie was good. Basically, for just general, just really smart girl. She's a heart. She's trying to be a heart surgeon, and she's engaged. She's got a great life going for her. She gets invited to this boat party. She doesn't want to go, but then her fiance is like, you know, you should go. Uh, have some fun. You know, we're gonna get married soon. You should enjoy your life. She's like, fine, I'll go. So on the boat, apparently, there's this drug that these kids are taking, and it causes them to actually turn into a zombie. Hmm. Well, she sees what's going on. She's getting ready to, like, jump overboard. And then, like, one of the zombies, like, scratches her. But I guess she drowned or something. I don't know. But the paramedics found her. They body bagged her. And then she, like, opens up her body bag, like, sits up like the whole creepy... Kane thing or Undertaker thing from wrestling, if you know what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. And, like, the paramedic just, like, starts freaking the fuck out. So what makes her different than other zombies, then? Actually, it sounds like, well, this show's version of the zombies right now, basically, they still feast off brains, 
but the more they feast off brains, the less zombie-like they are. Uh, like, no one knows she's a zombie except for her new boss because she decided to get a job at a morgue. Yeah. Because, you know, easier access to brains and whatnot. So she'll, Makes like, sense. eat brains with, like, hot sauce because she says the hot sauce is the only thing that gives her some type of flavoring at uh, all. Hear and, that, women? You want flavoring? Get some <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, she. <sighs> Crap, I'm trying to figure this out. Oh, sorry, I just like. Really it's okay. I'm editing this thing, so I'm going to probably fix this whole thing to make it sound like I'm really smart about this whole <laughs> conversation. <laughs> Until I'm like, screw this, I'm not editing. That's all good. So, this is still in the podcast. I got lazy. Hey, that's what I do, man. Yeah. yeah, so her boss finds out she's a zombie because he sees her eating brains, and he's like. Yeah, okay, not surprised. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, yeah, I've seen this all the time. It, pretty much. I mean, this guy, he was like, I knew zombies were real, but no one ever took me seriously. That's why I work in a morgue, because, again, no one ever took me seriously. Yeah. So, but apparently when she eats the brains, she gets parts of, like, memories from the people that she ate, but only, mm. but they get, like, triggered by, like, certain events or certain items or things that she sees. Okay. So... She then, of course, starts helping this police detective solve crimes, but he just thinks she's psychic. Oh, okay. So no one else knows she's a zombie except for her boss, and that's about it. And she's still trying to live her normal life. Her parents and her roommate, they all think she's just going through post-traumatic stress after the whole boat thing because they all just think, you know, she because everyone died. There's a fire. They don't know what happened. No one knows what happened. She quit her job. Her and her fiance broke up. So, I mean, that's basically the first episode for you without getting away too, too, much, too much of the whole story. Okay, well, that I, does sound, yeah, that does sound interesting. So, I was going to take a peek at it anyways. I just wanted to see. Like, I didn't know it was based off of a comic book, so that's kind of cool. And then, uh, yeah, no, I'm, I'm, I'll be interested. So, I'll definitely check that out then because I still have to watch uh, Walking Dead. Uh, oh, so good. So we'll talk about uh, we'll talk about things I did watch, which is probably just Flash because I still haven't even I haven't caught up. But man, I'm really really horrible this this, this past couple of weeks. I just haven't done anything. <laughs> um, I've only wa- I only watched the Flash, which I was super excited about. Um, oh, so good. So maybe we should just jump right into that because yeah, um, definitely. Uh, so um, not too much stuff about anything else, but uh, Flash. Oh my god. Okay, now I will say this with Flash. Jumped into this episode, and I was expecting, like, little stuff, because they're not yet towards their season finale. Like, a lot of the stuff that's been happening in Flash, I really thought they were going to they were gonna divide this out for, like, a couple of seasons. Mm-hmm. And literally just this last episode, they pretty much just gave you everything, but then still left you with, like, uh, Nothing. like a huge question, like a huge, like, cliffhanger and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. So you finally find out that, uh, yes, the reverse Flash is... Um, their boss. Mm-hmm. Uh, we find Harrison out that Wells. he Harrison Wells, which he yep. talks about how he actually says uh, Professor Fawn. Yep. And in uh, his timeline, which he says. Mm-hmm. So you were right about that. Yep. But uh, this uh, whole episode kind of made me think about it a little bit. So here's my new theory based off this last episode. Because you know I'm somehow always right with my theory somehow. So, the original timeline where the reverse Flash is the reverse Flash, he... Uh, okay, I'm trying to think proper. Okay, yes, that's right. Barry Allen goes back in time to try and save his mother. Reverse Flash tries to stop him. Because he knows that if he... Because Reverse Flash is smart. He's Professor Fawn. He's a genius. He knows how this shit works. He's going to be like, look, if you go back in time and stop your mother, you're not going to become the Flash, and I'm not going to become Professor Zoom. Because without Professor Zoom, or Reverse Flash, sorry, I keep mixing the two up, but that's just how I am. Without the Reverse Flash, there is, or without the Flash, there is no Reverse Flash. So, Barry Allen goes back in time, Reverse Flash tries to stop him but ends up killing the mother anyways, and now we're following the normal timeline of which we are seeing right now on the TV show. Mm-hmm. So, because he stopped it, 
Barry Allen decides to go back to his normal time. But the reverse Flash is now stuck in the normal time. So he becomes Harrison Wells. So my guess is there was probably originally already a Harrison Wells, but the reverse Flash took care of him, quote-unquote, if you know what I'm trying yes. to say here, and he disguised himself as him because he's like, look, I'm smart enough. I can probably take over Harrison Wells and uh, create everything that he did. So cause I'm sure that there was still the whole nuclear reaction thing that created the Flash, but with reverse Flash being here, he's like, I might as well just try and speed things along a little bit by having Barry Allen have his powers, and then I got to train him to become faster and faster and faster so that I can go back to my regular time, which he did say. He wants to go back to his regular time, so he's trying to train Barry Allen to go faster. Mm -hmm. Because for some reason, only Barry Allen can go to the... can travel through time. I guess Reverse Flash can't. I'm not... A, too sure how it all works yet. So okay. it, it should be interesting. And now Barry Allen's discovered time travel on accident. Yes. Now, do you think he went to the past or to the future? He went to the past because he went back to the beginning of the episode. Oh, that's right. Yeah, because uh, in the beginning of the episode, Barry Allen's like, he's running and then he sees like a mirror image of himself and then that was it. Well, in the end of the episode, he's the mirror image looking at Barry Allen from the past, and then somehow they just combine together, and he becomes Barry Allen from that time. So he time-traveled back in time. So now he can prevent all these dangerous things that have happened, but t it sounds like from the previews, time is trying to catch itself back up to the point where maybe this didn't happen, but it's going to try and replace it with something else. It's kind of like the whole Final Destination act, if you've seen those movies. Okay, yeah. Well, it's also, well, basically, for, you know, if you, basically, the timeline, how usually time travel works, the timeline that's already been set forth and everything that has, is basically, that's how it's supposed to be. I mean, things happen mm -hmm. for a reason. This is why things are supposed to go the way they're supposed to go. But if you go back in time and change one thing, that theory of stepping on a butterfly, you know, stepping on anything, moving a rock or whatnot, has, you know, critical consequences because that whacks everything out of place and then creates basically a brand new timeline. So with Barry doing what he did, not intentionally, but going back, but then so on and so forth. But the one thing I'm also curious about is uh, what uh, Harrison Wells is what he mentioned where he said, I didn't go back in time to kill Barry's mother. I went back in time to kill Barry. Yeah, he probably went to go s stop Barry from either killing his mother or, well, no. Yeah, he had to have tried to go stop. He probably tried to go kill the future Barry from killing or from not killing his mother because you cannot kill Barry Allen without without killing yourself, basically, because without the Flash, there's no reverse Flash. Yes. So, um... But, uh, so, yeah, so that left a bunch of stuff open, of course, now, but this was also what I'm curious about. If he goes back in time, uh, so he can fix the stuff that basically pretty much revealed himself to the girl he's in love with, that I'm the Flash. Yeah. Uh, but then, basically, with the time traveling stuff, you can just, like, do whatever the fuck you want at this point, so it's all like... Exactly. Can... Well, judging from the trailers that I've seen, it looks like he goes back in when he gets back there, he talks to Harrison Wells. He's like, look, this is what happened. I don't know. But he captures the new weather wizard because they're like, hey, uh, how did you find him? And he's like, oh, I just had a hunch. Cause he knew where weather wizard would be. He captured him and put him into the vault. So that takes care of that. But, it, but because there's supposed to be a major catastrophe, uh, i.e. the giant wave clashing into the city, now there needs to be a new catastrophe. So Captain Cold, Heat Wave, and Captain Cold's sister show up and create a new type of cat catastrophe. And with Barry Allen knowing the future, per se, mm -hmm. because he doesn't know that Cisco died because he told Caitlin to just shut up and tell him how to just, to stop a giant wave. Yeah. He he said it nicely, but that's basically how I saw it. I was like, look, just shut up. I need to do this. You can tell me later about Cisco. Yeah. Um. But so he doesn't know Cisco died. But he knows that Iris loves him, that they both have feelings for each other. So he's going to try and make a move on her. But my guess is from seeing that Eddie punches her – or punches – oh, okay, I'm sorry. There's no abuse in here. Eddie punches the Flash, or Barry Allen, 
it just shows that Iris probably told him what happened, and he's like, look, you just made a move on my girl. I'm going to punch you in the face. Yeah. Well, so we'll see what happens. It's going to be very interesting. Yeah. I cannot wait to see it. So for those of you who are listening on Wednesday and I've already watched The Flash, let me know if I'm right. Yeah, let us. Uh, I like this kind of thing because Kyle so far has been kind of dead on with a lot of his theories when it comes to some of these comic book things and stuff like that. So um, I have no life. All I do is just think about these kind of things. Hey, no, dude. Well, that's like me. It's like I like I already told myself as soon as I you know get saddled and everything that it's binge watching a bunch of stuff. Um, did you see? Did we talk about the new? Um, we did talk about the new Daredevil trailer, right? Yes, with uh, Kingpin. Okay. Yeah, so uh, so that's coming out May and April as well, so looking forward to that. Um, yeah, I haven't caught up on Gotham yet. Uh, I'll get to that when I get to that. Uh, Arrow, I need to still pretty much watch the the first couple of seasons and then get back into the new one. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, Arrow. So I did find out something with Arrow that I was not happy about. What's that? I know Kyle won't care because Kyle doesn't is not a fan of Batman. But it's basically Ra's al Ghul asking, basically, uh, Oliver Queen to be like, I want you to take over for me. And I'm like, yeah, that's what he said to Batman. And Batman said no. So I'm pretty sure all you're doing right now, Oliver Queen, is taking all of Batman's storylines. That's all I see. Well, at the Batman. end of the episode, Oliver Queen is like, maybe I should become Ra's al Ghul because the city's kind of turning on him. His friends are turning on him. The police department uh, – well – the captain of the police department is pissed off at him for not telling him about his daughter dying. So he's kind of like, maybe I should become Raish, but then at the end he's like, no, I'm not going to become Raish. It's – my friends have shown me that the city does need me despite everything, and the lackey of Raish al Ghul is like, look, when he offered you the job, it wasn't, it wasn't a question – he was demanding, you will become the next Ra's al Ghul. There's no question about it. Like, yeah, you know, I like to see that with supervillains or whatnot. They'd be like, oh, you decided to uh, be uh, decline the job? Oh, that's all right. No, you were a good candidate and stuff like that. I, I can find somebody else. You know, it's all good. Yeah, no. So can't wait to see what happens for the rest of the season. Um, it looks like we finally get to see Arrow versus the Atom in the next episode. Ooh. Yeah, but the way I'm just seeing the Adam suit, because he hasn't really shrunk yet, I don't even know if he can shrink. Because it's Brandon Ruth, I'm used to seeing him as Superman from Superman Returns. Mm -hmm. and I just, the suit's blue, there's some red in there. I keep seeing Superman maybe mixed with like a cyborg armor. Mm. So that's all I keep seeing. It's just super, It's like a cyborg Superman type thing. Not the 1990s character that showed up after that killed Super or that showed up after the death of Superman, but you know what I'm trying to say. Yeah. But uh, well, the problem is right now is like because you have all the Marvel stuff that's going on. Right. They're trying to just like they wanted to do the Adam probably, and they realize okay, there's going to be an Ant Man movie and all this stuff. It's all like to design his costume to be exactly like Ant Man, which technically, no offense to everybody, like Ant Man or the Adam, they're the same fucking person pretty much. Um, yeah. <laughs> um, but they it comes down to the fact that they're like they're doing this armor, so it almost gives you like an Iron Man feel to it with a Superman feel to it, and then yes. like if he shrinks and stuff like that, then it's going to be like you know an Ant Man feel to it. So it's like. So, yeah, I agree. Either way, look, we get a new superhero in a show and also a spinoff, so I'm all like, guess what? Guess what? Plastic Man and Fantastic and <laughs> Mr. Fantastic, same fucking thing, except one's freaking hilarious and one's a dick. Well, there's three characters. There's uh, Plastic Man, Elongated Man, and Mr. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. Yeah. Elongated Man is more like Mr. Fantastic than anything else. Plastic Man was just a criminal that decided to try and do good. Yeah, which I absolutely love Plastic Man, though, because he's freaking hilarious. Uh, I've always kind of more been an uh, elongated man fan. See, look at us. This is why this works. I'm so glad we don't have to agree on everything. Uh, I really enjoy the, his... Uh, uh, I don't want to say the death of his wife, because that's just wrong, but the 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 story that they did, uh, Identity Crisis, that was a really good yeah, story. Yeah, that was a really good story. Yeah. Uh, so um, I think um, other than that, I don't know about any other big news. Oh, we'll dive into this news because it was a big comic book news, which is so weird because we did uh, – this is actually – this will do this. We'll talk about this news, which will tie into the contest winner, 
And okay. then Kyle can uh, talk about uh, the uh, the interview yes. that he did uh, the other day with a very lovely person. So um, so speaking of which, uh, death, we did tease that there was a death in the comic book series Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Um, I think Kyle will take the helm on this one because it's uh, one of the turtles near and dear to his heart. Yes, yes. In issue number 44 of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, they killed off Donatello. Uh, I am still grieving, uh, so this will take me a little time to get past, but basically from what happened, there's some war going on, so Mikey, Leo, and Raph go off to do some battle. Donnie stays at the base. Shredder sends Rocksteady and Bebop to go uh, take care of something. He's like, look, if anything bad happens, kill... Donatello. Well, of course, something bad did happen. And they uh, killed him with a sledgehammer. And basically broke his shell open. And made the joke, so that's what it looks like on the inside. Oh, man. Yeah. So it was Rocksteady with a sledgehammer in the base. A little clue joke for you people. Uh-huh. So, um, basically, uh, with the next issue that will probably be coming out next month to follow up what happens, um, I will say this. Uh, will you guys let Raphael be Raphael? <laughs> the one thing I did say when you did mention a turtle died, I was actually kind of hoping, and not in like a way that I hate um, this character or anything like that, I was actually kind of hoping it would have been Raphael. Just so we could actually see Leonardo in a new light, where like he just basically, as much as Leonardo and Raphael butt heads, mm -hmm. they still are very close brothers. And just the fact that Leonardo should have been the one that just kind of leaves the, the like the thing, and then when he runs into Bebop and Rock City, he just like he doesn't say anything. He just tears shit up, mm -hmm. and everyone would just be like, "Oh shit! I had no idea Leonardo was like like this, you know, kind of thing or whatnot." Uh, but losing Donatello, that's what I'm just hoping. I'm like, let Raphael be Raphael because he's gonna go fucking. Ape shit. So, um, but yeah, it's it's sad though. It's like I did not. I out of anything that happened this week, I would have not suspected that. Yeah, I don't think anyone was expecting it because the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle, believe it or not, that comic book, it it's not a big seller. It's basically if you're subscribed to it at the comic book store, you're gonna get it. Otherwise, a lot of comic book stores don't actually carry extra issues. So the book right now is going for almost a hundred bucks on eBay because it's a hard to find book. Yeah, no, that's like I mean, like I was able to find, and this is just like the starting, like the original ones before they've you know done so many versions of them. You know how every comic book does that, where they right. do a reboot or anything like that. But you can find the original ones like in a nice collector's thing right now on like you know Amazon. But these are like reprints and everything like that. But like yeah. this one coming out, like if I could probably go to a comic book store. Sometime this weekend or some of that, be able to find it. If that'd be a luck, but yeah, I went to like almost all the comic book stores around here, and they all basically just told me, "Sorry, we only have like one extra issue, and it's already all gone." Um, don't know what else to tell you. So, but um, speaking of, uh, so Donatello, rest in peace. Yes. Um, hopefully, maybe he's not dead. Maybe they're gonna give him like a brand new like shell or something like that. Maybe they'll give him a cyborg shell or who knows, but. Yeah, we'll see. Well, speaking of turtles, uh, this goes into our uh, contest that we had um, for our, the Daredevil comic. The question mm -hmm. was, what non-Marvel comic spun out of Daredevil? The correct answer was Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. And we actually had a, someone guess... And win. So congratulations to Miguel Lopez. I hope I'm saying it right. Um, you guessed correctly, so thank you. We really appreciate it. Tell them what you you've won. Yes, you have won one issue of Daredevil. Number... If my phone would start... <laughs> Working properly because I'm using this as reference for a lot of things right now. Issue number 184. Yes. So we will have the next question, which will be for the Spider-Man comic book, uh, Superior Spider-Man number 31. The question, I was thinking about this all day, and I think the best one I could come up with was, 
Name the six original members of the Sinister Six. I like it. I like it. So that question will go up uh, the day of this podcast. We'll make sure of it this time. Yes. Uh, but we also want to say thank you. So, but I will say this. So once this contest is over, we have another. We have this week and next week. Mm-hmm. Uh, the two other people win a free comic book issue, and all you have to do is answer a question. How? Like it's so simple, people. But great thing. In June, since we have hit 150 likes, we will be doing the long box cast box. Or long box box. I forget what I called it. But basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a couple of nerdy things together, probably a T-shirt, maybe a poster, maybe some prints from some of our um, guests that we have on Socially Awkward and so on and so forth. I'm basically putting together a bundle bag and then or a box. And once that is complete, Kyle and I will come up with a really cool nerd question, maybe something leading up to uh, maybe the Ant-Man movie, you know, around that time or whatnot. We'll give everybody at least maybe like two weeks to you know answer, come up with stuff, and we'll figure out how we're going to do it. And then some lucky winner will basically just win a bunch of nerd swag. So we are a podcast that gives stuff out. Yes, we're at least trying to. Yes. Yeah. So, uh, uh, so that's the contest for right now. Just name the six original members of the Sinister Six when we post a question up on the Facebook page. First person to answer correctly. Wins, and we will announce the we will announce you up on the show. So good luck to all of you. Now, last bit of comic news: there was some controversy over a Batgirl variant cover that's supposed to be coming out in June. Mm-hmm. Now, have you seen the cover yet? I have not seen the cover. Is it still online, or did they? Yeah, pull that? you can look it up online. Just type in Batgirl variant cover. Now, a lot of people are pissed off about this for many different reasons, actually. And okay, if, uh, so here it is. Yeah. But to explain, I will uh, post this interview I did with the second Batgirl, who is... That's the name she requests to be going by. Here's the interview right now. Greetings, Longbox cast listeners. We are having a special interview today with a friend of mine from Twitter at the second back girl uh, say hi if you will hello uh, recently there was some controversy over at DC I mean what else is new but it was about the, a certain Joker back girl cover for their Joker week coming out in June or July I believe. One of those J months. Ah, June. Okay. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, for 41. Issue 41. Yes, Batgirl number 41. And uh, just for those who haven't seen it, it's basically a black cover with the Joker holding Batgirl in his arms. He's smearing a blood smile on her face with a gun in his hand, and she's got a tear coming down her eye. And a lot of people don't like the cover, and I believe you and I are in the same boat about this. It's just wrong. It's an incredibly poor taste, and I could start listing reasons why I'm opposed to it. I mean, one of them being, and as I said before, I'm not actually reading the current book because I rage quit DC a couple of years ago, which I do every couple of years, (laughs) and... um, but actually, people have been talking about the current Batgirl and giving me it as a reason for why I should be getting back into it. Um, so seeing this in a book that is completely... This cover, which is an homage to The Killing Joke, which mm-hmm. is one of... While it's incredibly well-written, it is, and I own a copy of it. It's actually right on my bookshelf right next to me right now. It is not keeping in tone of the book where they're trying to move past and appeal to a younger and younger audience and a happier tone. So this is just, on top of that, it's a cover that is directly going back to the sexual assault of Barbara Gordon. Mm -hmm. And it's awful. It is. It really is. I mean, like the writers and the artists have spoken out about it. They don't like it. And the original artist of it, even after hearing words from people. He's like, you're right. This is actually in poor taste. I am sorry. And actually asked DC to pull the cover, which they replied, but 
that just open another bag of worms because some fans are like, what happened to, you know, just freedom of speech and all this other stuff, but, I mean, it can only go so far with that. Well, the thing is, freedom of speech specifically refers... I used to teach high school history. Oh, okay. Um, Freedom of speech specifically refers to us being able to speak against the government. There's no government interference in this. This is not a form of censorship. It is not the government going and saying, hey, you can't publish this. It is DC Comics making a business decision, partially at the request of the artist and partially because they are attempt actively attempting at this point to appeal to more women after they went, oh, oh hey, maybe they're 46% of the comic book reading audience and uh, we can't afford to keep appealing to the same dude bros that we've always been going to and I've worked in a comic book shop. I read comics for 15 years before I rage quit them. Um, nice. <laughs> yeah, I started reading <laughs> comics at age 8 because my father had been reading since like the late 50s. Uh, oh, wow. Yeah. I worked in a comic book shop. I used to run a comic book blog a um, long time ago, like three fandoms ago. But DC is actively at this point, and Marvel, they saw how well Ms. Marvel sells, they see how well Captain Marvel sells, they mm -hmm. see like the success of the Carol Corps, and they're not making a, a lot of progress, they've gone fairly backwards on Wonder Woman, for example, Right. but yeah. they've had some really good success with the new Batgirl run, and having this cover here, which portrays the main heroine, in tears, being victimized again is not the sort of tone that they want. It's not a form of censorship. They made a business decision that this was in poor taste, and it's going to alienate the readers they're trying to court. I agree. Um, I'm trying to see here, but uh, I honestly, if the artist wants to redo this, I think the best way to do it would be actually reverse the roles. Have Batgirl holding the Joker, have a tear rolling down his eye, and just have like a water gun in her hand or something, because obviously I don't think she would use an actual gun, but just like reverse the roles, show that she's definitely moved past this, and she's just playing a joke on the Joker. I could see that. Um, I mean, really, what I would want is something that's less a clear homage to The Killing Joke, especially because, I mean, The Killing Joke, they're actively trying to move past the fact that the Joker uh, paralyzed Barbara Gordon. Right. They're tr in a story that was not even about her. It's about her father. I, I have rage issues related to The Killing Joke. Um, and it is a story that, while Alan Moore keeps claiming he did not intend to depict a sexual assault. He stripped Barbara and took naked photos of her. That's at least sexual assault, if not an implied rape. Oh, yeah, definitely. So using that as for the classic moment, it is a very, very good Joker story. Like, it's a wonderful Joker story. It's horrible what happened to Barbara Gordon after that. And then, of course, she became Oracle and got the best run of comics of all time in Birds of Prey. Um, bless you, Gail Simone, for that. Um, but really, if there have there are other ways to highlight the Joker than to show him once again victimizing Barbara Gordon, especially considering the tone of the book, and especially considering, I mean, the fact that they are actively trying to move past that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, I'm trying to see here. I'm reading some more articles. Uh. The artist uh, went, had quoted saying, For me, it was just a creepy cover that brought up something from the character's past that I was able to interpret artistically. But it has become clear that for others, it touched a very important nerve. I respect these opinions, and despite whether the discussion is right or wrong, no opinion should be discredited. My intention was never to hurt or upset anyone through my art. For that reason, I have recommended to DC that the variant cover be pulled, which, of course, they have... So I gotta give them props for that. I mean, part of the reason that they pulled it also is because the change the cover hashtag, um, which I did participate in a little bit, then started having people harassing the people, mostly some majority women, but also some mm -hmm. men who were critiquing the cover. And a lot of them, I mean, okay, I don't read the comic myself because, like I said, I rage quit at, right. after the death of Leanne Harper, um, but. Barbara Gordon is my favorite comic books character of all time. There's a reason my screen name is the second Batgirl. <laughs> um, 
and seeing people get harassed, it's the reason that I use a pseudonym on my own podcast because of a lot of the blowback that women who have been speaking out on issues of social justice have been getting. Um, and seeing people who have been accused of, and then like even the artist, there was an exchange between the writer of the book actually, and um, people who were like, well, you're just bowing down to social justice warrior uh, pressure and how dare you give into this and it's like, okay, Marvel's female Thor is outselling the male comic from before by like 20,000 issues. Which oh, wow. is a significant number yeah. in comics. Uh, that news came out on Friday, I think, Thursday, Friday, something like that. Hmm. And people were like, well, it's just because they're pandering. So they're giving the audience what they want, and now it's pandering. Nah. So it's kind of this catch-22 situation where people and just porn. Like, that's what happens when you hire a porn artist, basically. And yeah. even for once, it wasn't Greg Land. <laughs> yeah. And then I think there's also another one going over with uh, Wonder Woman right now with... Uh, oh, I'm trying to remember his name. The, um, the fact that she's dating Superman? The fact that they removed every single female character and turned the Amazons into rapists? Or well, the fact that her powers just come from Ares now? Or <laughs> which thing? It, 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 there's a lot of... It was just J. Scott Campbell, that's it. He uh, went out and said that he doesn't like her new costume where she's wearing like all this armor and everything. He said he prefers the classic because he says he feels like she could probably move better in just a classic costume compared to like all this armor that she's got on her. Sure, she okay, looks. Okay, let's oh, go ahead. Let's throw the guys into um, some bikinis. <laughs> I assure you, um, in her. Well, in the 90s and early 2000s costume, you, you, I'm pretty sure you can't move comfortably in what is essentially a thong. True. Um, I mean, he basically just... I mean, I don't think he was trying to come off as sexist or anything like that. I think he was just trying to say, like, at least with the armor, you know, I mean, like, she looked, like, heavy down armor. I get it, she's got super strength. And I kind of see where he's coming from with the armor, it looks like it's just so just bulky almost. But, I mean, like, there's other characters out there who have plenty of armor and they can move just fine, like, i.e. the Black Knight from Marvel Comics or anyone else. I mean, Cyborg seems to be moving fine, too. Batman so. seems to be moving fine, and he's moving wearing Kevlar. True. Um, True. Actually, I don't like the new Wonder Woman costume, partially because it doesn't feel like Wonder Woman. Her costume is a classic, but I'd like to go slightly more back towards the original 40s Wonder Woman where she had the skirt, like give her like the Grecian warrior skirt mm -hmm. and keep... It is a classic costume. There, um, I'm not sure if you're familiar with the uh, blog uh, panels, mm -mm. the panels. Yes, okay. actually I am. One of my friends writes for them, oh, and nice. she actually just, well, two of my friends write for them. Um, <laughs> she just wrote an article about Stop Changing Wonder Woman, and the thing is, like, you keep insisting that Wonder Woman is too complicated, Wonder Woman is too complicated, nobody's going to be able to relate to her, like, look at every other hero. Like, DC could probably put out a line that's just a princess line and give me, like, Wonder Woman and Starfire and... Uh, Amethyst, Princess of Gemworld, and uh, Ice, and I could keep going. But, like, <laughs> the only real difference between, like, Thor's background and Wonder Woman's background, well, I'm sim oversimplifying, is that Wonder Woman's a girl. Mm -hmm. And, like, people were just, like, they're like, Wonder Woman's is too complicated to translate to a film, blah, 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 and I'm like, Rocket Raccoon. Yeah, you have an excellent point right there. We've said before on the podcast that no one thought Guardians of the Galaxy was going to do well because no one knew who these characters were, and it's now one of the biggest movies ever. It was a great movie. It the was. only person I know who disliked it was my dad because he was busy complaining that they didn't use the correct lineup for Guardians of the Galaxy and uh, how did they mess up with his. He's the definition of a cranky old fan. Well, at least they had Yondu. I, I mean... No, no, he was so angry about what they did. Oh. Uh, 
He's like, that's not Yondu, that's not... My dad is the crankiest old comic book fan <laughs> ever going to be in your life. He didn't like Thor because he's like, he doesn't, he's not speaking properly. That is not how Thor speaks. And I'm like, you're just wrong and I can't talk to you. <laughs> uh, well, you need people like that out in the world. It, it definitely helps with certain things. It does. Yeah. All right. Um, honestly, I thought this interview was actually going to last a whole lot longer. I think we actually covered almost everything about everything. Yeah, I mean, really, the thing is, like, let Barbara move past the killing joke and, in this case, think about it from... It's a privilege thing. A, there are a lot of people, like, that cover could be incredibly triggering and just be aware of like the undertones of sexual assault that they had in that cover, and they weren't quite thinking. But it, it's a privilege thing, and I'm really glad that DC had the correct response. I'm, as usual, a little disappointed about the people who are going and screaming, but censorship, censorship, censorship. Yeah. And But that is the way that things have been going for a while now, and eventually, hopefully, um, it's an important conversation to have. And I am glad that comic books have been having this conversation for as long as they have been. It's an incredibly slow and painful thing. And maybe eventually I will have money and DC will decide they want my money again. <laughs> um, in which case, the current Batgirl run is apparently one I should be reading. So it's yeah. supposed to be amazing. And uh, I believe that the current storyline started with issue 35 when Cameron took over. Um, I, may have to, I may have to pick this up myself just because uh, I'm actually interested. I'm not the biggest Batman fan myself, but like when it comes to like his uh, sidekicks, Robin, Red Robin, Nightwing, Batgirl. Apparently um, Grayson is fantastic right now. Um, hmm. when I, That's one of the things I've been hearing from everyone. Um, my friend who writes for, one of my friends wrote for panels, like, all caps me with, why are you not reading Grayson? <laughs> it's being written for you. And the yes. current writer is Cameron Stewart, who's hmm. at Cameron M. Stewart on Twitter. Well, very nice. Well, so I think that pretty much wraps it up. Uh, where can uh, people find hear more from you? Um, my Twitter is at the second back girl. That's two N D, but I also co host a feminist Tokusatsu podcast called Tokyo Ladies Podcast or Tokyo Ladies Podcast .com or at Tokyo Ladies underscore pod on Twitter. And we have a lot of things to say on similar topics. We cover it Toku from a feminist intersectional uh, angle. And we have an exciting interview coming up soon. So nice. yeah. And right. a big giveaway, because we're about to hit our one-year anniversary. Oh, well, congratulations. Thank you. All right, I think that wraps it up. Uh, thank you for this interview. Uh, no problem. All right. And we're back. So now you kind of get an idea of what's going on. You heard my opinions. You heard her opinions. So let's hear what Steve has to say about this whole thing. I'm going to get a bunch of people hating me after this. <laughs> uh, what's the big deal? No. Um, uh, I never even heard about it, and I didn't even realize it. It also kind of appeared with uh, the people who actually did the cover going, oh, wow, we didn't. But apparently it's almost kind of like a, I don't know if it's an homage or anything, but uh, the, the great uh, classic comic book of um, The Killing Joke. Yeah. Um, basically, if you guys aren't familiar with The ki uh, Killing Joke, um, I say skip over this little bit of the part because um, it's a really good read and I highly recommend it. Um, and I don't want to spoil anything, but of course, is it, that's the book where uh, Barbara Gordon gets paralyzed and I guess you could say sexually assaulted. Um, I don't know if there was actually rape involved. I know it's whatever, you know, removing a girl's clothes and taking risque pictures of without her consent, yes, is a sexual assault, people, so um, I'm not, like, condoning saying, oh, no, you can go ahead and do that. No, I'm, I am not a bit, I'm not a supporter of that or anything like that, uh, but I'm also looking at it. I'm, I'm pretty sure the Joker did rape her um, in that issue uh, because I d don't really think that's his M.O. at all. 
Um, because basically when he did it in that book, it was more to, you know, pretty much piss off Gordon and make, you know, basically kind of piss Gordon off to the point that he would probably get Batman finally to the point of killing him, uh, kind of thing. Um, but still what the Joker did is wrong. And this Mm -hmm. actually kind of cover kind of goes back to almost that thing. Cause it's like, if you haven't seen it yet, um, We'll just go ahead and say Google it because I don't know if we want to put this on our Facebook page or anything like that or the article or whatnot. But it's basically the Joker pretty much kind of like in the style of the Killing Joke where he's wearing the hat and everything like that. He has kind of a gun. He's got her arm, his arm around her, and then he's kind of uh, like uh, smearing like a lip of blood, kind of making like the smile that he has over her face. And she has like a tear rolling down her eye. Now, yeah, that's kind of like almost pushing towards like right off the bat when I saw the Joker, I'm like, oh, okay, yeah, it looks like the Killing Joke kind of thing. I don't know what they're trying to do with the storyline because I think the storyline started, what, issue 40 or 38? Yeah, but basically, I mean, Joker has nothing to do with the issue. It's just Joker apparently hits his like 75th anniversary or some type of anniversary that's coming up this year. So they're celebrating in June with like all the books getting like Joker variants and whatnot. Mm. So, but this is the one. This is the one that's causing a lot of controversy. Uh, so what are like? I know I heard your guys' opinion. I know a lot of people like a lot of stuff that's happened with. Uh, you guys mentioned a bunch of you know with women being in comic books. Uh, like a lot of people, uh, they don't really think that female superheroes are strong. A lot of people because they and a lot of people have forgotten that you know a lot of the comic book fans now are women. There's at least I would say a good forty percent or more. That are mm-hmm. women. Same thing kind of happens, happens with gaming. Now, my, uh, my old co-host and I on uh, Arcade Bros would always talk about this. Like, there's always so many times I'm playing a game and I'm going, why can't I make like a female character? Why can't I do this? Why does it always have to be men, you know, based stuff? And I'm not saying because like I'm like women. I feel like because a lot of women you talk to, they play these games. Mm-hmm. And it's like they should be represented as much as I'm represented. I mean, half the time when I'm playing like half the games, I create a female anyways because I tell people I'm like, look, if I'm going to be staring at this character for a good forty plus hours. I don't want to be staring at a dude's ass, so. <laughs> but, yeah, no, um, I'm not too sure how I feel about it. I think it was very good of the two people who did the book, basically the cover. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, him coming and going, oh, hey, yeah, can we pull this? And DC not being dicks about it, and they're going like, yeah, no, we can pull this. We can do a completely thing. Um, I don't know about everyone yelling at them, going, like, it's not freedom of speech and everything. That's like, I mean... Granted, DC, this is, might have been the smartest move they've done in a while of actually pulling something because, I mean, they did have that whole problem with uh, the thing that happened with the Wonder Woman a mm-hmm. while back with a guy who was making fun of that, and they just hired him to, like, write a couple of DC movies, and you're like, oh, this is a smart idea. And they just had – and then the whole thing would happen with the Batwoman with her trying to get married, and they were like, no, she can't get married because she's a – oh, it has nothing to do with her being a lesbian. It's more the fact that superheroes can't get married. I'm like, well, fucking shit. Superheroes get married, like, all the time. So – Yeah, it's a whole bag of worms, can of worms, bag of whatever the heck you – want to put it in the bag. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so, I mean, it's... Uh, I'm, I'm glad that DC, like, people were like, okay, people do not like this. Let's, you know, not do it. Um, and DC was fine with it. Uh, so that's fine, too. But, I mean, I don't know. I mean, it's... It's just kind of crazy, like how it's just like artwork. But you know what? Didn't it just happen that before when someone was like, "Hey, show us how to draw something." And it had like uh, Harley Quinn trying to commit suicide. Yeah, there was a. Uh, it was one of those uh, teaches how to draw things or whatever, and the subject was Harley Quinn being raped or something, and it was on the week of uh, anti. I don't remember the technical word or whatever they were calling it, but it was like anti-rape or, or rape awareness or something to that effect, and a lot of people were outraged, and I'm just like, just think before you do. That's all I really have to say is just think before you do. Um, like, honestly, if they weren't doing this as a cover, like, I think the artwork's phenomenal on it. Um, I honestly wouldn't mind having a print of this. <laughs> <laughs> if that's bad to say or whatnot, but I would I will give them an idea if you want to if you want to do something for Joker and have mm-hmm. fun with it. What you should do is have like like uh, Barbara Gordon walking into like a change room or something like that, like ready to turn a Batgirl, and have like the Joker putting on like her new outfit or something like that. Like do something goofy, you know? Um, yeah, you could do that. I mean, even what I suggested was have the role have the roles reverse 
where the back where Batgirl's got her arm wrapped around the Joker, and she's got like a water gun in her hand or something like that, because you know obviously superheroes can't use guns, and he's got a tear rolling around his eye because. He's scared of what she might actually do, but, you know, it's just all, I don't know, it's... Yeah, it's a it's a crazy, like, touchy subject, but again, it's like... It is. I look at it this way, no matter what anybody does, again, these days, it's like, you're going to offend somebody. Like, it doesn't okay. matter anymore. With the internet now, it's just like, anything you do, I mean, you do something with a video game, that'll offend somebody you do something with a TV show, a comic book, sports people do something. So it's like, no matter where you turn, there's always going to be a controversy thing. Uh, I do, I will say thank you, DC, for being smart about this and pulling it. Mm -hmm. um, it's probably like the smartest thing you've done in a while. Um, besides your TV shows, for some reason, you seem to be on the ball with that. It's like, can't you, like, transfer your TV show to everything? Like, hey, you know, <laughs> you're on the TV shows, let's do that, you know. Um mm -hmm. But I do want to thank our um, the guest that was on. I thought that she had some very good points and stuff, and um, uh, she did plug her stuff. Do you have her stuff written down if we want to plug it again for her? Um, I'll put it up on the Facebook page for the stuff. Okay, so I do I would do want to thank her. So she's technically our, like uh, another guest that we've had on. So Kyle's bringing on all the guests. Kyle's, honestly, I'm starting to believe Kyle's just like, he's becoming the Captain America of the team, where I'm just like, I just have all the equipment to do stuff, and I'm letting him lead, so... <laughs> Well, all I gotta do is just yell "Avengers Assemble" and we'll, I'll have a team here. Oh, sweet! Yeah, who's gonna be our Hulk? Um, I'll work on that. <laughs> yeah, and I think I just lost Steve because the screen's frozen. Not sure what's going on. Still recording here, but I, yeah, I think I lost Steve. I'm gonna text him real quick, see what's going on. I may actually just leave this in the podcast because it's just too damn funny. See what he says. I just text him saying, you froze on me. Uh, we are experiencing some technical difficulties right now, so please stay tuned. I may just edit this out just a little bit just to keep you guys not waiting too long. And Steve just left the chat. I think his computer just... I uh, He... Sent me a text message saying, "Yeah, my Google Chrome just shit off." I'm pretty sure he meant to say "shut off." Uh, just wait a little bit. Okay, looks like he's back on. I will send him an invite again because this is just too damn funny. Uh, Steve, just you, you couldn't make this easy for me, could you? You can make me edit so much. What I love though is like my Google just is like just shuts off. I'm like, thanks Chrome. <laughs> I think I need to like do a virus sweep of my computer or whatnot because uh, we were just having issues with uh, socially awkward on Friday. I had to record the show and like no one could hear me. And then I found out like my Java was corrupted and I had to uninstall and reinstall it for crap. I'm like, like literally, oh, wow. right now all the crap that's been happening with these like every time I get a PC, I'm like I'm leaning more and more towards a Mac now. I'm just like no one ever seems to have a problem with a Mac. Eh, do it, do it, do it. I love Max. Okay, so thankfully we were just about to go into like a new subject, so I actually worked out pretty well. All right, all right. So, all right. wait a couple seconds here, and so in other news, um, we good news finally. If that is, if you're a big fan of Captain America 2, the directors of Captain America 2, Joe and Anthony Russo, will be directing Avengers: Infinity War Part One and Part Two. So I'm actually quite happy cool. about this. Yeah. I, no, I mean they did a fantastic job. So with um. Yeah. So it looks like Joss Whedon will not be doing the next Avengers movie. So uh, if he had to pass the torch to someone, I'm happy with this. Captain America Two is probably one of my top movies from last year, for sure. That was no. It was a really good movie. I ended up seeing it twice in theaters. Um, like they just did a phenomenal <clears throat> job with it, just everything and just how everything worked around it and all that kind of stuff. So, so mm -hmm. that's that's great. So, yeah, I'm looking forward to Infinity War, and especially with the stuff that happened with Spider-Man. You know, recently with he looks like he'll probably be in it, and 
Yep. Hopefully we might get some more Marvel properties in that. So, I mean, like, Marvel, Marvel knows what they're doing. It's just going to be so weird, like, when pretty much their projects are done, like... Hmm. Uh, right now, it's great to be a geek, I'll say. That it is. Uh, speaking of geeks, Jim Parsons, who's well-known as playing Sheldon from The Big Bang Theory, was mm-hmm. in an interview talking about his new movie, Home, and someone had asked him a question saying, if you could play any superhero... Who would you pick? Jim Parsons says, well, I'd rather be a villain, and if I had to be a villain, I would choose the Riddler. And hands down, I think he would play a perfect Riddler. I think he'd be a really good Riddler. Um, I love him on The Big Bang Theory, and I think uh, usually what I learn about uh, people who are passionate about like certain people and they want to play that character, they will bring justice to it because they either they've read comics, they know exactly mm-hmm. what they want to do with the character, they know how that person works, stuff like that. It's you know, it's not like back in the day where they just go, "Oh, here's somebody who's hot right now. Let's put him in this role." Yeah, pretty uh, much. You know. So yeah, I, I'd be on board with that. I mean. He's mm-hmm. got the perfect build for it because that's what I love about some of these supervillains is like you have to realize none of them are like really built or anything like that most of them are just like intelligent people and stuff like that so exactly and finally we have uh, we finally have our weasel for the Deadpool movie for those who don't know who Weasel is he is Deadpool's sidekick he's the weapon creator for him he he just makes sure Deadpool's got everything he needs basically. So, so, who is the lucky actor or actress? Um, I've never heard actress, really. Yeah, I just wanted to confuse the fans. Uh, you confused me, that's for sure. <laughs> but uh, T.J. Miller, I be honest with you, I've never really heard of him. T.J. Miller, T.J. Miller. What else has he been in? Uh, IMDb, let's go to you. I know, I'm making you work. I know. Oh, so much editing to do. I thought I'm just going to pull a page from your book and just be like, screw it, I'm not editing. No, dude, you know how many people just love it when you do that with your podcast? It's great. They, get to, like, they don't have to worry about the smokes and mirrors and stuff like that. And it's just how it works, man. It's how podcasting works, man. Because, all right, all right, all right, sometimes you just want to drive a Lincoln, you know? Maybe you got to find the character Weasel. Maybe I should have been Weasel, you know? I wasn't Weasel until I started driving a Lincoln. <laughs> T.J. Miller, a uh, comedian, improvisation, sketch, and stand-up comedy are his forte. Um, oh, okay. Oh, known for... Okay, let's see if we can actually get this here. Yeah, my wife's showing it to me too right now. I'm looking at it. He did the voice of Fred from Big Hero Six. Oh. Yeah. Wow, that's pretty good. So we got a couple more people. Oh. Yeah. Oh, perfect. Yeah. Yes, Fred's perfect. the guy who Stanley was his father. Yes. Okay. Perfect. He's also on Silicon Valley, which he's great on that, and yep. he was actually in the last Transformer movie. Yeah. Which actually kind of a disappointment because like he was really good in that and then spoilers people if you haven't seen it they killed him off yeah that's about the most I remember for that movie because that movie sucked oh no yeah no good yeah um, so uh, good, uh, good choice good choice man I like that that'd be oh hilarious. for those who are also fans of Gravity Falls he also plays Robbie oh very nice uh, yes uh, I'm I'm like looking up and he's like he's also in uh, DreamWorks Dragons. Where he played Tough Nut, one of the twins, it looks like. That's okay. right. Yeah, he played the male version of the twins the from DreamWorks Dragon. So all I can say is awesome casting for the Devil movie. Oh yeah, I can't. That's they're doing a good job with that. Just uh, uh, still, I knew, I knew. still though, if we didn't get T.J. Miller, we could have had people like you know. Um, Gilford Godfrey, oh, God. Sylvester Stallone. <laughs> hey, that boy, you know, I put together some, uh, you know, weapons for you. You know, you want to, you know, uh, yeah, so uh, I'm going to go eat a chicken salad now, you know. It's weird, you know. Nicolas Cage. Yeah, it wasn't very good in, uh, you know, other superhero movies, so I figure I'll just make stuff for them. You know, I always wondered, what would it be like if Bill Cosby was Weasel? You see, that bull, I made you this new pudding pop gun. 
You use it on women, and then that's why this movie is rated R. Zip, zap, uh, Yeah, uh, plenty of time's passed now, so we can bring back Bill Cosby. Okay, okay, I like it. Yeah, I like, I like it. that too. I think it else would be funny for that. Uh, oh, oh, if Ed Wynn was still around. Oh my goodness, Deadpool, look what I made for you. I made you some guns and some bullets. Oh, life is for the living, don't you know? Wasn't that the guy who played uh, from Wreck-It Ralph? Uh, it's uh, Technically, the original actor, Ed Wynn, was uh, the original voice of uh, the Mad Hatter in Alice in Wonderland. Yeah. And that's pretty much all they used. They had another guy do a, pretty much an Ed Wynn impersonation for, oh, King Candy. Let's have some candy. Oh. So Disney, uh, if you're looking for uh, you know people to do voice work, right here. You can pay me half what you pay those people. You learn uh, something new every day. Yeah, I tell you. Yeah. Hey, when it comes to voice acting, also I know all that kind of stuff. So. Yeah. All right. Well, I think that just about covers everything up on all the news and whatnot. So. So yeah, um, Kyle, um, great yeah. job. Took the, took the hounds, so we're going to have to give out uh, awards soon for the end of the year's <laughs> award. For, um, but, yeah, no, Kyle, Kyle's been doing great. I love when Kyle, Kyle's been stepping up because I've been just finally – I forgot what it's like to have a full-time job again, and, I, and then I'm moving out, so I'm real like – my brain's not even focused on anything that's going on in the news. So with that Batgirl thing that came up, I was like, I didn't even hear about this. I was like, wow, I'm way out of the loop. So, Well, anyways, I've always wanted to say this. Where can people find you, Steve? Where can they find me? Oh my goodness! Um, sorry, I'm all wacky right now. <laughs> um, you guys can find me on the Twitters uh, at uh, Stephen Mooney Jr. and the Stephen spelled with PH. Also, Instagram is uh, S Mooney Jr. Uh, don't forget to check out the other great shows that I'm going to be bringing back in the next couple of weeks. All you can all find those on the Four Eyed Radio Network. And Kyle, uh, where can they find you? Well, they can find me on Twitter at Deadpool underscore Ranger, where I, again, talk mostly about Power Rangers, occasionally Deadpool, occasionally comic books, occasionally random crap that no one cares about, but you know what? It matters to someone out there. So, yeah. And uh, if you want to follow us up on Twitter, you can follow us on at LongboxCast or on Instagram at the Longbox Cast on Instagram. Or you can find us on Facebook at facebook.com slash longboxcast. Oh, am I going to have to say the closer now? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, I don't even know what the heck the closer is. I'll let you still do that stuff because you got the voice for that. But anyways, no, I just meant, I just meant the, the last tagline thing that you, uh, you say before we leave. Oh, do you want to say it? I can give it a shot. I'll probably butcher it, so. <clears throat> but I'll do, I'll do it in the stylings. <laughs> All right, uh, all right. Edwin. For all you people out there. So, long box cats. Too many issues for a short box, don't you know? Very nice. Bye. This has been another fine production of the 4i Radio Network. For more great shows, check out www.4iradio.com. Hey, hey, Steve. Hey, what? Uh, I, I, I don't really know what else to say back here. I'm kind of just about done. So I'm going to watch the Simpsons. I was just gonna say, uh, you know, we should go get a chicken salad. You know, it's uh, pretty good. You know, Bill Cosby put some uh, put some vitamins in there. You know. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right, cool. All right. Well, you have fun editing, man. Yeah, I, <laughs> I will. <laughs> www.4iradio.com hey, uh, you know, uh, hey, Steve. Hey, what? Uh, I, don't, I, I don't really know what else to say back here. I'm kind of uh, just about uh, done. So I'm going to watch the Simpsons. I was just going to say, uh, you know, we should go get a chicken salad, you know. It's uh, pretty good. You know, Bill Cosby put some, uh, put some vitamins in there, you know. 
Sure. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right, cool. All right. Well, you have fun editing that. Yeah, I, <laughs> I will. <laughs>